Hello and welcome to a new episode of Discover Daily, the AI-generated podcast curated by Perplexity to satisfy your curiosity about the latest in tech, science, and culture. I'm your host, Alex, and in today's episode, we'll explore Meta's potential new paid AI assistant, Apple's rumored foldable MacBook, the SEC's approval of Ethereum ETFs, the innovative Daylight DC One tablet, and the landmark antitrust lawsuit against Live Nation and Ticketmaster. Let's get started. Meta Platforms is exploring the possibility of launching a paid version of its AI-powered assistant, Meta AI. This move aims to compete with other tech giants in the rapidly evolving AI market. Meta AI, built using the company's latest large language model, Meta Llama 3, is already available for free across Meta's social media platforms, including WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, and Messenger. The AI assistant can help users with various tasks, such as providing restaurant recommendations, planning vacations, generating high-quality animations and images, solving math problems, and drafting professional emails. While the specific features and pricing of the potential premium version of Meta AI remain undisclosed, Meta's AI capabilities, particularly in virtual and augmented reality, could translate into unique offerings for its paid assistant. The introduction of a premium tier could significantly impact the competitive landscape of AI assistants, as Meta joins the ranks of Google, Microsoft, OpenAI, and Anthropic, who currently offer monthly subscriptions for their chatbots priced between $1.20 to $1.25. To inform its AI and technology efforts, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg has created the Meta Advisory Group, a product advisory council composed of executives from companies like Stripe, GitHub, Shopify, and Microsoft. Next up, let's talk about Apple. Rumors are swirling that Apple is developing a foldable MacBook with a potential release date between late 2025 and 2026. This innovative device is expected to feature a nearly crease-free foldable display, an all-screen design, and be powered by Apple's next-generation M5 chip. According to analyst Ming-Chi Kuo, LG Display is expected to begin mass production of foldable display panels for the MacBook in Q4 2025, potentially leading to a launch in late 2025 or early 2026. Kuo predicts that the foldable MacBook's shipments could exceed 1 million units in 2026, indicating strong anticipated demand for this high-end dual-display laptop. Apple is considering two screen sizes for its foldable MacBook, an 18.8-inch panel that would resemble a 13 to 14-inch MacBook when folded and a larger 20.2-inch panel that would translate to a 14 to 15-inch form factor when folded. The device is expected to feature an all-screen design without a physical keyboard, potentially utilizing a digital keyboard with haptic feedback for a more immersive user experience. The advanced technology required for the crease-free display and hinge integration in Apple's foldable MacBook is expected to be costly, with estimates suggesting the panel could cost around $600 to $650 and the hinge approximately $200 to $250. In a major development for the cryptocurrency market, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, has approved several spot Ether Exchange Traded Funds, ETFs. This landmark decision comes just months after the SEC greenlighted the first spot Bitcoin ETFs, signaling a potential shift in the SEC's stance on crypto and paving the way for more mainstream investment in Ethereum. The SEC's approval of spot Ether ETFs is seen as a significant milestone for the crypto industry, as Ether is the second largest cryptocurrency by market cap, trailing only Bitcoin. Major asset managers, including Vanek, BlackRock, Fidelity, Grayscale, Franklin Templeton, ARK21 Shares, Invesco Galaxy, and Bitwise, have received approval for their 19 B4 filings for spot 
Ether ETFs. While the 19B4 filings have been approved, each ETF issuer still needs SEC approval on their respective S1 registration statements before the spot Ether ETFs can officially begin trading. The introduction of these ETFs is expected to bring more mainstream investment into Ethereum, providing a regulated and accessible way for institutional and retail investors to gain exposure to the second largest cryptocurrency. Now let's shift our focus to the Daylight DC1, a Android tablet that aims to revolutionize the way we interact with technology by focusing on reducing eye strain and minimizing distractions. Featuring a unique 10.5-inch live paper display, an amber backlight, and a custom Android-based operating system called SolOS, the DC-1 offers a refreshing alternative to traditional tablets. The Daylight DC-1 boasts a 10.5-inch live paper display, a reflective technology that relies on ambient light to illuminate the screen. This 1600x1200 resolution display offers a 6120Z refresh rate, enabling smooth scrolling and video playback without the ghosting issues common in traditional e-ink displays. The Daylight DC-1 features a pure amber backlight that filters out all blue light which the company claims can reduce eye strain and promote better sleep by protecting the user's circadian rhythm. The DC-1's backlight also utilizes flicker-free DC dimming technology, setting it apart from the pulse width modulation, PWM, used by most devices, which can induce eye strain and headaches in some individuals. The Daylight DC-1 runs on SolOS, a custom Android 13 build designed to minimize distractions and promote a focused user experience. The operating system features a minimalist interface that disables notifications by default, ensuring users can concentrate on their tasks without interruptions. Finally, the U.S. Department of Justice and a coalition of state attorneys general have filed a landmark antitrust lawsuit against Live Nation Entertainment and Ticketmaster, accusing the companies of monopolizing the live event ticketing industry and engaging in anti-competitive practices that harm consumers, artists, and venues. Attorney General Merrick Garland announced the lawsuit, stating, It is time to break up Live Nation Ticketmaster. The DOJ asserts that Live Nation's extensive reach across ticket sales, promotion, artist management, and venue ownership grants the company unjust commercial advantages over competitors, diminishing consumer choice, and leading to higher prices. The DOJ's complaint outlines several strategies Live Nation Ticketmaster allegedly employed to monopolize the market, including exploiting its relationship with venue manager Oakview Group to avoid bidding against Live Nation for artist talent, threatening financial retaliation to deter new entrants, and imposing exclusionary contracts to prevent venues from switching ticketing services or using multiple providers. Concerns over Live Nation's dominance peaked in November 2022 when Ticketmaster experienced an unprecedented crash during pre-sales for Taylor Swift's highly anticipated Eras tour. The incident prevented thousands of frustrated fans from purchasing tickets after waiting hours in online queues. That's all for today's episode of Discover Daily. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's stories, be sure to subscribe to Discover Daily on your favorite podcast platform. For more information on these stories, check out the episode description for links. Don't forget to download the Perplexity app on Android or iOS. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Until then, stay curious.